Welcome back to the Moonshiners Kickoff Summit. I'm the executive producer, Matthew Ostrom. We are getting closer to revealing what happened to Mark and Digger that never happened to any Moonshiner in 12 seasons. But first, making moonshine takes a lot of work and ingenuity and creativity. Three of our shiners are taking innovation to the next level this season. All right, I would like to welcome Amanda to the table. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here. It's awesome to be here. Amanda, you're kind of the, the scientist of the group right here. Let's take a look and see what you're up to this season. I always wanted to try distilling on the grains. So what I started doing at home was I take glass marbles and I put them in the bottom of the pot. The marbles work as an agitator. It reduces any risk of scorching throughout your whole run. I don't know anywhere to get any marbles. I ain't played with marbles since I was in school. And I wasn't in school much. All right, Amanda, clearly you're doing some fun stuff. Tell us about what's going on with these glass marbles in the still. So everybody likes to ask about the marbles, right? It's just a really easy, simple way to create a cheap agitator for the pot. You know, you can throw a couple glass marbles in the bottom of your still, and when it starts to simmer, they rotate along with the alcohol, and if any solids ever get to the bottom, it's always gonna constantly agitate them. It keeps mash from scorching or sticking to the bottom and scorching, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So colonial distillers used to use hay, and they would line the bottoms of their pots with hay, but this is more like a Japanese kind of technique where they actually put the marbles in a teapot and it helps the pot to heat up faster. Because Mark and Huck, I would say, are like traditionalists, right? Yes, very much so. So what's it like working with two traditionalists then? It's great. Um, I wouldn't rather be with anyone else than them because they're really stuck in their ways. Um, <laughs> but it's a good thing. It's a good thing because they're preserving techniques that have never been recorded, you know, things that have been forgotten over time. So I'm learning from them and I'm, I'm learning why people have continued to do these old techniques for so many years and 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 what that can bring. Sure, okay. And Tim, mm -hmm. I know you did a little innovating this season. So yeah. let's, let's take a look at what you're up to. There you go. We prepped the logs and built a cap. If we can just roll it over. Now it's time to put this thing together into an actual steel that can make it look. So this is gonna be like the cap, like that. Oh, that way. Put the condenser barrel sit in here. Uh-huh. And catch it coming out over there. Well, looking at this log still, it starts to make you wonder, what's the flavor of this moonshine gonna taste like? I mean, it's gonna have to bring out the essence of the wood, and that poplar's gonna have to pull over into that shine. I'm excited to see how great it's gonna taste when it comes out that worm. And voila, we have something that looks similar to a steel. You know, when you get back, you look at this thing, it's a steel. All right. Tell me about these poplar logs that you were using. What is this? Well, uh, I researched a guy named J.W. Dant, and uh, he was famous uh, back in the day of being resourceful and using logs, log distilling. He had a process of putting logs together, hauling them out, and putting them together and making this steel. So uh, Howard and I, we did the same thing. You know, sure. we went and we recreated this. We went to a sawmill and we bought uh, a big log, which at first we didn't realize it weighed 2,400 pounds, <laughs> but uh, it was a task, you know, and we hauled out two logs. We put it on top of each other. Yeah, which... I can imagine sealing a wood log. Is... And we used all natural resources. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just to give you an inside, we, uh, we robbed the uh, bee's nest. So we use honeycomb, pine needles, and honey, and that made it all stick together. Wow, so wow. that's like a very traditional yeah. still. Yeah. And uh, we put a cap and a condenser, and we add it together, and uh, we made moonshine. All right. So Mike, yep. you and Jerry this season are kind of like the MacGyvers of moonshiners. I got to say, you're coming up with all sorts of crazy things that we've never seen before. Yeah, uh, you know, me and Jerry, we try to come up with different ways to keep building something cool that works. And this year, he dreamed up a steamer steel to do inside the woods. You know, we built an actual condenser inside of our steel, and we actually put in cubes. So that way, we can run our steam, heats our mash without any scorching. We have no mash barrels whatsoever. It's all inside this pot. Time you're through running, you just kill the fire under your steam vessel and walk away. Let's just take a look at what you've been up to. My God, that's it right there on the bottom, brother. 
Me and Mike's finally got the heat exchanger done. We're gonna have to piece two sheets of copper together. We're actually gonna make a tube out of it and then slide the heat exchanger into it. <laughs> We're all but home free now. Snug as a bug in a down, down rug. There's nobody else out there doing what me and Jerry does. We're about ready to take this sucker to the woods, man. Yes, sir. Damn, buddy. That little gentleman's heavy, son. Right now, the U.S. is in the middle of one of its biggest inflation crises in its history. Prices for supplies keep going up, but so does the presence of the law. Let's take a look and see what these guys are up against. I just got back to Virginia, and the first thing that Henry tells me is the fire marshal's looking for me. Well, the whole time he's talking, all I can think about is, have they found the steel site? There it is right there. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Our whole site's been destroyed. This can't be happening. OK. All right, so Josh, who do you think is messing with your still site? I mean, it only makes sense if the law's looking for me and my still site's been blew up. It only makes sense if it's the law. Sure. And the tickle, what do you, you got any ideas well, on this? You know, it makes good sense that it was probably, you know, most likely the law. If somebody else comes in on your steel site and just happens upon it, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll steal all the copper out of it, you know, what's valuable that you can recycle and make some money, especially now with inflation being the way it is. But to destroy it all, it only makes sense work. it was the law. Right. And don't they tell you to never go back to the scene of a crime? Yeah, you're taking a big risk, but my curiosity would have been up to. I'd have probably done the same thing, but. I didn't go right back in there. Right. It was weeks later before I went back to check it out. I, but listen, I say it's a bad idea, but I'd have done the same damn thing. So Tickle, what do you think about Josh's strategy to lay low and just avoid, avoid, avoid? A wise man once said, ain't nothing illegal till you get caught. <laughs> but if you know you're gonna get caught, yeah, avoid it at all costs. Sure. And you went to a very extreme in your avoidance. Absolutely. And we have a little bit of a sneak peek. Check out what Josh did. I don't have any idea where the hell I am right now, but I know I'm somewhere in Brazil. Chris told me you can ride some bikes. Oh, yeah, yeah. What do you say about these two? Those are awesome. Chris wanted me to come down here and find the perfect coffee bean to mix with alcohol. We're definitely on to something. It don't get no better. Josh, you literally left the country. I sure did. OK. I got a job, and I went on a mission. So why Brazil? Well, because I've got some business partners that I went into a coffee business with, and they asked me to go to Brazil and find the perfect coffee bean to mix with alcohol. The only problem was it just didn't last long enough. It was over in a blink of an eye, but I learned how to make Brazilian moonshine called cachaça. I found so much that I almost didn't even want to come home. It was amazing. I guess so. 